Boris Johnson's hike to national insurance has gone down with the public like a cup of cold sick. Labour strategists therefore might feel confident given Starmer vocally opposed it. However, when it comes to articulating an alternative to the Tory social care plan, the Labour leader is far less convincing. When it comes to funding it, I wouldn't uh, look to working people um, and have a tax hike on them. And I, would say, I, I would say that those with the broadest shoulders um, should mean? pay. Well, that means that um, those that earn their money or their income from uh, things other than work should pay their fair share. The wild um, tax. Well, um, there is, we, you know, there's a whole range of uh, I've got things some we could here look at here. But pe 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 people who, earn, people who earn their money from property, the dividends, stocks, shares, um, you know, capital gains tax, these should all be looked at as a broader, fairer way okay. of raising taxes. So in principle, you would prefer a wealth tax of some sort? I think we should look at all of these options and we shouldn't say that the whole weight has to fall on working people, that the people who earn their living from a wage, why shouldn't those that get their money from other means, whether it's dividends, stocks, shares, um, property pay their fair share. And the landlord example is a very important one. Why should a landlord not pay a penny, but the working tenant, uh, so because they're earning a wage rather than a rent? you prefer wealth taxes than a raise of income tax? I think we should look across the board at something that is fair, but at the moment... You would the government, prefer a wealth tax to raise an income tax? I think we look at a broad range here, um, but the idea that we don't... The one thing the Can Prime Minister said... Can you just answer said, that? Just, do you prefer, in principle, wealth taxes to income tax increases? I think we need to look at a range of options. You're not going to answer. Well, we need to look at a range of options, but that includes um, the way people earn their money, whether it's from earned wages or whether it's from rent or stocks and dividends. And um, I think we should look at all of that because in the end it should be uh, the principle that um, those with the broadest shoulders pay their fair share. OK, so just to summarise, national insurance, you think you're anti that because you think it's unfair on working people. Income tax could be looked at. Uh, but it seems to me that you think that when you say those with the broader shoulders, you are looking at those with wealth taxes, you are looking at those... We're looking at the, precisely the um, sorts of income that Rachel Reeves identified yesterday, which is income from property, income from dividends, stocks, shares, etc. The, so um, the income seventeen. that comes not from your wages, because what the yeah. government is doing is putting this all on on working people. So and that's that is, not that income is tax unfair. then, is it? That well, is wealth taxes. Look, I'm trying we to pin you down because I actually want you to say yes or no, I think we should look at a wealth tax. It doesn't commit you to the policy. It just says to me that that's your preferred option and that's very clear and it's very clear to the public. Yes, all of those options are a wealth tax. I mean, you know, in the broadest sense of the world and we should look at it. Fair play to Beth Rigby. I thought her exasperated face during that interview was incredibly effective. Um, Aaron, I saw you share this interview on Twitter. It is slightly odd, isn't it? Because Keir Starmer is in quite a strong position here. He's in favour, or you know, apparently he's in favour, even though he's not going to be explicit about it, in, 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 of some form of wealth tax. The Conservatives are pushing through a very unpopular increase to national insurance. He should be shouting about it, yet he sounds like the shifty one. What's going on? You know, I made the joke on Twitter that he looked like, there was a still from the interview, he looked like um, a divorcee who was being clobbered by his wife and Beth Rigby was the expensive central London lawyer uh, who was who was milking the cow. You know, there's that saying, isn't there? In a divorce, you've got the husband and the wife. They're pulling both ends of the cow and underneath you've got the lawyer with the others. And it that's kind of what it felt like. It felt like he was being told, well, look, Juliet's going to take the London flat, the, the house in Umbria and both dogs. He looked really upset for some reason. That was strange because like you say, he, he he was kind of on home territory, and she was making his job really easy. I don't think I don't think she was doing that on purpose. I think she just, yeah, you know, you're not expecting something that specific this far out from a general election, on principle. And he kind of answered it, but then didn't answer it. Do you prefer tax on wealth or on work? And you just need to say, in principle, yes, we would like them. You could just say we want them both aligned. I mean, that's going to raise a hell of a lot of money, which is again what he kind of said, but in a really shifty, poor way. Now this tells me two things. Firstly. I don't think he believes in anything. I genuinely think he would say whatever the polling said was more popular. 
Uh, and, and even though the polling is quite good around wealth taxes, there isn't that much data out there. So just don't say anything. And I don't think he really has a kind of moral core on this particularly. Uh, I know some people disagree, but I don't think we've ever had a leader of a major political party in this country get to where they are and believe in so little. That's my personal view. Keir Starmer is about, always has been, and that's fine. That's life. Career progression. And he is in politics. And if you really care about career progression, you want to get to the top of your game. You know, the equivalent of the, the leading CEO in the country or what he was previously as the, the director of public prosecutions as a barrister. The equivalent of that in politics is to become the prime minister. And so he would say purely what is useful instrumentally in order to achieve that uh, career ambition. I mean, that's not good. I, that's my personal view. I don't think that's particularly good. Again, people can disagree with me. If he had been asked a question about Jeremy Corbyn or about the left or about how somebody who'd been suspended or accused of something should be thrown out of the party and they happen to be a socialist or an MP or Ken Loach, he would have been very critical. He would have been very stern. He would have been very direct and decisive. All the things he's not in that clip. And so that, for me, is the biggest worry of all. You know, you might agree or disagree with Starmer on some issues, but he clearly is incredibly comfortable in attacking the left and not really saying very much about policy. You can't run a country like that. You cannot run a country like that, right? That's clearly not a, that's not a program for government. And I think the electorate will, has already worked that out. You clearly can't run a general election campaign like that. I mean, they can try, and I think they probably will do that. And I think that'll start, by the way, uh, with his um, with his conference speech in, in in a few weeks. I think Keir Starmer will make his conference speech about the left. I think it'll be a rerun of Kinnock in 1985, partly because it's his comfort zone, as I've just said, partly because he's literally got nothing else to say. And he knows that the media, generally speaking, is going to lap that up. They're not going to push back on it. Whereas, of course, if he says, I support policy A over policy B, there's a bit more you know, criticism and the Tories will weigh in. He attacks the left. He attacks Corbyn. He attacks people like Navarro Media. Uh, that's just great for him. And the Tories get on side and it takes the heat off him and removes some of that political pressure, which he insists on putting on himself by being so bad as a politician. If he was asked about Jeremy Corbyn, he'd say, look, this is an issue of leadership. I have to take a strong position because that's what it means to lead a party because I want to lead a country. If he's asked about policy, he says, well, uh, don't ask me. I'm just the leader of the opposition. We haven't done a manifesto yet. I'm I'm not here to to take leadership on the issue. <laughs> you know, so I, I think it's a it's, it's a very important um, comparison to make. How he is when he's asked those questions, whether uh, the, the option given to him is whether or not he's going to attack the left, and the ones where it's whether or not he's going to put forward a different vision for the country. Um, one politician who is um, attempting to put forward a vision for the country is Andy Burnham. Um, Mayor of Manchester and probably Keir Starmer's biggest rival at the moment. Um, he's written a piece in the Evening Standard. Slamming Boris Johnson's social care plan isn't enough, he says. Labour needs its own ideas. So in this piece, Andy Burnham is obviously saying what Keir Starmer's doing is enough. He needs to put forward a positive vision, a positive alternative. And he explains this is what he wants it to be. Labour should create a national care service. Labour should ask all older people to contribute whether they need care or not. Everyone benefits from this approach because it means no one has to worry about care costs in the later stages of their life. And by asking all older people to contribute, the cost comes right down. More than 10 years ago, I promised this approach as health secretary as part of my plan for a national care service. My 10% care levy on all the states was labelled a death tax, but I still stand by it. I accept that my care levy wouldn't pay for the entire social care bill, so I would supplement it with a range of wealth taxes, such as a higher rate of capital gains tax. This is a truly far-reaching Labour policy, and I think the country is now ready to back it. As we get ready to gather in Brighton, the political tide might just be turning in Labour's favour, but we've got to be ready to catch the wave. A clear challenge um, from Andy Burdham, a very pointed intervention. There is pushback from Keir Starmer's team. They're defending um, the position of not having a position. Um, this is from Patrick Maguire from The Times. He was told by a senior party source, we're far from a victory, but the polls show that the social care scam wasn't the brilliant wheeze number 10 was spinning earlier this week, and our decision to focus attention on their plan, expose it, and not get spooked into making a big announcement of our own in response, despite some flack, was the right one. What do you make of Andy Burnham's intervention and also that defence from a senior party source that actually not having a, a fully fleshed out policy 
gives them more space to attack the Conservatives without this becoming you know, a, a distracting? Well, how much would Labour's cost? What are the holes in Labour's policy? Sure. Who, who do you think is sure. right here? There's some truth to it, of course. And I don't think Labour needs to, you know, line by line, fully cost how they would, you know, reform social care in this country. However, I think that that's a fundamental rep- misrepresentation of the criticism that you or I would make. Do you support the principle of wealth tax or taxes on work? That's really simple. He didn't do it. And I think he was, you know, he, it's, a, it's an open goal. It is really an open goal. So I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think it was a masterstroke to not say that personally. In terms of Andy Burnham, you know, he, he gets a lot of flack. People say he'd be Starmer Mark II, he's a Blairite, or, you know, that's, that's where he came from, right? His, his trajectory is certainly from there. But you have, to, you have to also be fair. You know, in 2010, when he ran for the leadership, he, he was talking about national care service then. As health secretary under Gordon Brown, he was talking about social care more than a decade ago. Uh, so I, I believe him when he says we need to do X and this is how we'll fund it. And I also believe he, he's thought about it. You know, it's not last minute politicking to, to, to get some popularity because he's been saying that same thing for so long. Uh, and Burnham is a former SPAD, former special advisor. So we can, we can you know, lambast SPADs all day. There are many ex-SPADs in politics, Ed Miliband, Yvette Cooper, Ed Balls, Andy Burnham, uh, David Miliband, the list goes on. That whole John Ashworth, that whole group of sort of post-Blair sort of advisors going into Labour after 2010, basically defined the party. Um, and that's why Corbyn really upset so many people. He wasn't a former SPAD, but they do know a bit about policy. And they are quite familiar with questions around whether it's social care, education, tax, defence, whatever, because they've been doing this for 10, 20 years. In the case of Burnham, about 20 years. Uh, Keir Starmer was a, was a lawyer until 2015. And so I'm sure he's going to learn a great deal. He's going to get down to the brass tacks of, of political economy and so on. But he, he doesn't know a lot of this stuff. You know, we go back to that story, which was in the Sunday Times a couple of months ago, about him basically doing, you know, an economics for dummies 101 with uh, Charlie Falk and Red Miliband. What makes us different? I mean, people might think I'm making this up. Go check it out. Charlie Faulkner, Ed Miliband, Keir Starmer, Sunday Times. They, he was asking, what makes us different to the Tories when it comes to the economy? And they had to tell him. I don't think Andy Burnham has those problems because he's been doing this for so long. And that's why I think, you know, what he's saying on social care, totally authentic. You might say, well, I think he's talking a load of crap. He's being opportunistic on X, Y, Z. And that's because he wants to be leader of the Labour Party, he wants to be the Prime Minister. I may or may not agree with you, depending on the issue. I don't think that's the case with social care. Keir Starmer's people would say even what Andy Burnham is saying is, you know, that opens up a lot of avenues for them to attack the Labour Party when, you know, at the moment, the Conservatives are having a difficult moment. I I wouldn't necessarily advocate something as concrete as as Andy Burnham is suggesting right now, even though I think it's a good policy position. But there is a there is a big middle ground, which is just for Keir Starmer to say, I support progressive income taxes and I support wealth taxes. He doesn't have to give amounts. Neither of those things are unpopular. So. Yeah, it just seems like an own goal to me.